Hi, I'm Sanjeev Majumna. I'm a plastic surgery consultant from West Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. And as I'm sitting here in my car waiting to go and have a swim in a few minutes, I thought I'd discuss plastic surgery from my perspective. Now, regrettably, many people, when they hear the word plastic surgery, immediately synonymize it with cosmetic surgery, bums and tums, if you would. And cosmetic surgery, of course, is a part of um, plastic surgery, um, and that's fine. But plastic surgery is so much more than that. It's 90% of my practice, for instance, is reconstructive surgery. And in fact, plastic surgery started in the war when Harold Gillies uh, Sir Harold Gillies noted that there were all these uh, patients who were coming in, these young men who had had disfiguring injuries from the war, and he set about trying to help them out. And thus the, the, um, the whole specialty of plastic surgery was born. But plastic surgery, interestingly, is a lot older. In, in fact, the very first operation written down um, was by Shusrata, in the Sushruta Samhita uh, from thousands of years ago in India. And the operation that he described was reconstruction of the tip of the nose using a bit of the forehead skin moved around. And fascinatingly, this particular procedure is still carried out for reconstruction of the nose as it gives a very good result. Now, what, what is plastic surgery? Well, I would like to think that we plastic surgeons, we fill gaps and and you may think well, what do you mean by fill gaps well let's define gaps let let me define gaps as an absence of a part of the human anatomy when it should be there so for instance uh, a child may be born without a part of the lip so there's a gap in the lip because the gap the lip did not form um, correctly that's called a cleft lip um, and plastic surgeons reconstruct that and in fact plastic surgeons actually invented and described techniques to uh, reconstruct the um, the lip defect. Now, let's say a child can be born with other defects, couldn't they? They could be born without a finger, they could be born with an ear, and we do things to, to um, reconstruct these areas as well. One can acquire gaps, of course, more often. The gaps are acquired, these what we call defects in medical parlance, and you can acquire gaps, let's say a dog uh, bite to the lip, causing a gap in the lip. We can use techniques to, to help with that. Uh, loss of part of the nose, similarly, no longer chopped off like they did in India as a punishment, but more from trauma, whether it be a car accident, dog bites, such like. So you can have someone who's chopped a, a finger off and we reconstruct it using microsurgical um, uh, techniques. Or if, say, someone has their thumb that's quote, totally mangled, we can't be reconnected back like it did for the finger. You can reconstruct it by taking a tool and putting it on. And, and that's that's the uh, part of what we do. So people can also acquire gaps secondary to operations for malignancies, that is cancer. So the most common one that we can think of right away is breast cancer, where a lady has a mastectomy. The body image is, is, is a hugely important thing, as you can imagine. And one can reconstruct the breast from using um, things from different parts of the body, for instance, taking tummy um, skin to reconstruct a very um, normal looking breast. Uh, we can use plastic surgery techniques for situations where horrid infections may have taken away parts of the body like noma or necrotizing fasciitis and so on. Now all of these things I've described so far are really talking about things to for life enhancing if you will to improve form and function and when we say form we mean that something looks like what it should normally look like. For instance, reconstructing a breast, we want it to look like as normal as possible, reconstructing a lip. However, not only as form, but there's a functional element. The lip has to work like a lip. If you reconstruct a finger or a hand, you need to make it look and, more importantly, function like a hand. So plastic surgeons like to reconstruct for form and function. Um, but as I said, with most of what we've described so far is for life enhancement or the quality of life improvement. But there is an element of plastic surgery which is also life-saving and immediately burn surgery comes to mind. Now in this situation, the, the tissue that is absent, the, the gap, if you would, would be skin. And 
the, the the skin is such an important part it holds everything together if you had a large burn where you've lost you know uh, 15 20 40 90 percent of your skin even then it is a life-threatening injury essentially if the skin is not replaced you will the patient will die uh, and and burn surgeons works um, very hard to actually ensure that these people live. But burn surgery is so much more than just that life-saving element of it. There's also the life embellishment in, in as much as burns victims, all the scars and so they get. We do reconstruction to ensure that they look as normal as we possibly can make them, uh, which is form, and make sure that they function as normally as possible, that their fingers move, their, uh, their mouths move properly, the eyelids move properly, all of that. So how do plastic surgeons do all of this? Well, plastic surgery differs from other specialties in a few ways. One of it is that we are a technique-based specialty rather than a procedure-based specialty. So plastic surgeons don't learn specific procedures such as a hip replacement or an appendicectomy or such like. We turn to uh, learn techniques and when you learn techniques, we then utilize these techniques for whatever problems may come up. And when one is uh, training to be a plastic surgeon, we, we start off with what I like to call a, an empty reconstructive toolbox. And this toolbox is virtual toolbox. Uh, we then start to fill with tools of reconstruction, which is the techniques that we learn. And we start off with how to sk stitch skin properly to ensure that you get the best result. And then you go on to something like a skin graft where you take a shaving of skin from one part of the body and put it in another, which is an extremely powerful tool which is used in burn surgery and so many um, wounds are covered by this. Where skin grafts can't be used, we then use things called flaps, which essentially are skin and other tissues, which have its own blood supply that we can move around. And then you go on to the really powerful tools. The power tools, if you would, in plastic surgery, which are free flaps and a free flaps or free tissue transfer is essentially taking a bit of tissue with its own blood supply, disconnecting it and moving it to another part of the body and reconnecting it via microsurgical techniques, you know, blood vessels, uh, which are uh, five, six millimeters two, three millimeters or even smaller sometimes and you reconnect it to ensure that the tissue that you've moved survives. So you can use these techniques to, for instance, take a bit of tummy from someone and reconstruct the breast. You can take a bit of the um, the pelvis with the, uh, the, with the bone as well as some of the soft tissue around to reconstruct a hole um, on the jaw, maybe from somebody's had a, a cancer removed. You can take apart the rib and some tissues and, and um, reconstruct an air. So the rib uh, movement is not done with microsurgical technique, one hastens to add. You don't, you're not limited to actually moving this from one part of the body to another. You can actually move from one person to another. Um, and in fact, you know that um, face um, transplantation has occurred and that involves taking part or almost an entire soft tissue element of a face from a cadaver uh, with obvious per previous permission um, from the person when they were alive and then transplanting it to someone who has had horrific injuries to give them the form which they look more normal and the function where they can eat properly where they, their mouth can close and their eyes can close and it's 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 a it's a amazing sort of um, great leap in the techniques that we've used uh, in yorkshire we've had the first um, hand transplant in the uk not so long ago followed by the first double um, hand transplant so plastic surgery is an extremely exciting field. It's it's a it's a dynamic field. It's a fast moving field, and and we like good people to come into it. It's a lot of hard work to to um, to do, and a lot of hard work to get good at it. But if someone is keen, someone is intelligent and willing to put in the graft, no pun intended, and the hard work, well, this is a fantastic field, and I would very much um, tell you to get into it. Now, just to finish off, you've got. Um, cosmetic surgery and cosmetic surgery is a part of plastic surgery um, and it is a, an element that people poo poo a lot because oh, you're doing things to people who don't need it but that's a different discussion it's 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 a very highly challenging field with very small margin of error and it, it actually is using plastic surgery reconstructive techniques which have been modified and evolved to to use it in cosmetic surgery
So I'm Sanjay Majumdar and that is my um, view about plastic surgery in a nutshell. Thank you.